What's going on guys? Tony Avnov here, lead trader and mentor at TradeBuddy. And today we're gonna to be talking about cryptocurrency. Yeah, I know, I know. I have not talked about cryptocurrency in quite a long time. Um, frankly, ever since the, the huge mania, uh, you know, back in January and December, I really haven't seen a good reason to trade it. We were just making uh, lower highs, lower lows, and just a lot of the volume has been uh, just has just vanished from the market. And without that volume, we're not going to get that big exuberant move that everyone's hoping over 19,000. Uh, as far as altcoins go, I have not traded any altcoins since, I don't know, like February. Uh, I, I just really don't see the need to. Frankly, the last time I logged into Binance was, you know, back in February. Um, it just seems like just by looking at uh, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin, that the overall market is just moving a lot slower and there's just not really much progress, um, you know. I don't really see the reason to uh, trade cryptocurrency when you have these penny stocks that spike up 100, 200, 300% every single day and it's predictable. Um, and the main thing that is different between penny stocks and cryptocurrency is that uh, penny stocks, I mean, they're a known system. They're going to be around forever. All the laws are based around it, are already made, all the tax rules, all the regulation, they're already all set in stone and it's not going to change. There's a there's a deep infrastructure created around trading stocks whereas in cryptocurrency it's a lot newer of a way to trade therefore there's not as many rules there's not as many regulations and, and there's a, a lack of that uh, the core infrastructure to really make it sustainable in my opinion um and that's why we've kind of uh had this move away from crypto away from cryptocurrency uh and you can just tell that just by looking at uh, the charts of Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. But there is some opportunity that I am seeing potentially. So we're going to break down that in this video lesson. So I hope you guys enjoy. And I'm going to switch over to my trading view screen right now so you can see exactly what I see in Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. And just talk about um, the overall market. So if you guys enjoy this content, please leave a like, subscription, and leave a comment down below. If you want to see more crypto videos, I cannot promise I'll do them a lot just because there's not really much to talk about in my opinion, but I will definitely try to do more crypto videos because I see all of you requesting them down below. So with that being said, we're going to switch over to my uh, view on tradingview.com. Um, if you guys want to join TradingView, it is completely free. They do have a pro version that's like, I think, 10 bucks a month. I'll have a link down below for that so you can check it out. Um, I prefer the pro version uh, just because when you have the pro version, you can, uh, well, one, you have no... You have no advertisements and two you can use a lot more indicators when when you're on the free version you're limited to three but when you're on the pro you can add as many as you want so with that being said we're going to switch on over all right guys so we have switched over to tradingview.com now, if you're confused about this chart, let me just break it down first. This is the uh, the the chart of Bitcoin against the dollar, and this is from Bitfinex. So, um, the first thing I want to point out is that I am using a logarithmic scale um, that just uh, makes the the price move up logarithmically um, as the price goes up, and I have found a lot of benefit using this log scale on Bitcoin. It seems like a lot of the the price action likes to follow the log scale. Um, I believe there's more large traders who who follow the log scale than the regular scale just because of how exponential we've seen Bitcoin move. So when you log into tradingview.com, you can go into the settings at the top right corner, uh, the chart properties. And then on the scales, just hit log scale and then it'll switch on over. So just check off auto scale, check log scale. And also if you want it to be like a nice black background, then just hit the dark theme and that'll change for you. Um, so now, now as far as indicators that I use, um, the yellow line is the 50 moving average, the simple moving average. The red line is, let me see, uh, the 200 moving average. Oh no, I'm sorry, the, the, the yellow line is the 60 moving average and the red line is a 200 moving average, both simple moving averages. I'm just going to change the, 
the 200 to blue because that's what I use when I trade penny stocks. So just to have that nice consistency there. And I'm going to change this to the at uh, the 50 moving average because that's also what I use when I trade penny stocks. So you can see that changes the line just a tiny bit. If you don't know what moving average is are and how they function, you can check out my video lesson. Uh, I posted it back in like October to search on my channel, moving averages, and I'm sure you'll find it. And then of course, I also use volume. That's also very important. You cannot trade anything without knowing what the volume is. And then I use the stochastics. So one of the main things that I see on Bitcoin is this very clear level of support here at the 6300 level, which is actually what we're testing right now. So we do have a potential of a triple bottom. Um, if I had funds in, in my crypto account, I would be buying this dip. But frankly, I have not seen the value of having money in my in my crypto account because um, it just moves so damn slow. But if you have money in your crypto account, I would recommend taking the risk and buying this dip because we have seen that two times in the past, it has dipped off that level. However, you have to also consider uh, the downsides of this chart. We see every time that we've bounced off that level, we have made higher lows every single time. So make sure you take your profits on this bounce. I would not expect this to be a big reversal until we see this make a very clear uh, higher low. And also one thing I want to point out is just look at the volume over the past year. In general, we have seen the volume drop and we can see that more clearly if we look at the one week chart, you can see Ever since this massive run up, up to 19,000, the volume has been dropping uh, significantly. Let me just get these events away because I don't need those on crypto, just so we can see the, um, the volume. But you can see ever since it's big move up to 19,000, the volume is dropping. And uh, that's a pretty bad sign because if you really want any type of big move, you need volume you need traders. And one thing that's going to happen is that like, because we've had so much volume traded up here in the 9,000s, 10,000s, 16,000s, when this tries to bounce back up, you can imagine that the people who, who are bag holding, who did not cut their losses are going to be re really tempted to minimize their loss and sell into any spike, bringing it on down further. So what we really need, is a resurrection of this big volume that we had. And that's not going to happen unless we have some very big news about crypto, um, in my opinion. Of course, it could change at any time. We have seen crypto uh, like fail in the past and then you know recover and then squeeze massively. So that could definitely happen again. I would not cross it out of the, uh, out of the realm of possibility. However, one of the main things I do want to note is that this last spike on crypto was all the way at $1,100. And what I've seen happen time and time again, especially in the penny stock market, is that you have to retest the previous level of resistance in order to move on higher. And that's what happened back here. So you can see uh, like this price action was mainly uh, topped out at 172s over here back in uh, like 2008. And after it's big squeeze up to 1000, it dipped all the way back down, retested those levels, confirmed it as support and then squeezed on higher. So um, that's kind of what I'm looking like to happen on, on Bitcoin. I wanna see this dip down to this 1000 level, retest it, make it a level of support and then it'll start inching upwards and then as people watch it, you know, move higher, they're going to regain the exuberance. They're going to regain the willingness to buy back into it. And they could potentially squeeze up and make another leg higher. Um, I would definitely not leave that out of the equation, but right now, uh, like this level of support at 6,300 is not very significant. It, it, it was never a previous level of resistance. It's only acting as support now. So you, so essentially what I'm saying is that you could buy this dip on Bitcoin down to 6,300, but don't expect it to retest 19,000 and just make sure that you take your profits along the way and lock in that nice 20, 30% gain.
the one thing I do want to stress on on crypto though is that it moves very slowly. So make sure you have the patience to hold through very long moves. And you can see here on the four hour chart, we do see some nice volume, so that is good. But overall, the volume is pretty lacking. So now let's switch over to Litecoin and Ethereum. We'll, we'll uh, look at Litecoin first. And these all kind of have the same charts. Um, I've noticed that like the big three cryptocurrencies, they usually move in unison. And you can see here on Litecoin, it does look a bit better because on this dip, we do have a previous level of resistance, which is now trying to act as support. So let me just draw that out on the chart. You can see on on 9-1-2017, it topped out at $96. And then you can see ever since then, it's dipped down it, here. It never retested that level. It bounced up, made a lower high. Here, it made a higher low, so it looked bullish, but then eventually cracked on down. And now it's retesting that major level of $95, $93. So this would be a good time to try a dip buy. But of course, like I said, look at the volume. Look how much the volume has dropped ever since Litecoin made that insane parabolic move from $3 up to $360. That's a massive, massive gain. And you can see lots of the volume was down here uh, in the like 30s and 40s. So that should be acting as support because, you know, theoretically, the average trade, the average share was purchased down underneath this price. It's not so top heavy. So Litecoin does look a bit better because a lot more of the trading happened underneath the current price. So this is more likely to act as a bounce. And because this is retesting that previous level of resistance, this bounce has the chance of retesting Hive Day. Not saying it's going to. The, the main thing is that you never know what's going to happen. You just have to take the risk. So if you want to buy the dip on Litecoin, I would recommend doing it now and managing your risk properly. So now next we're going to look at Ethereum. So Ethereum, same thing. Let me just clean up this chart real fast. I'm going to take out this trend line because it no longer applies. And you can see we kind of have the same thing on Ethereum as we did on Litecoin. So this previous top here at uh, the $400 range is now being retested again. You can see back here in April, it actually retested it very successfully and bounced from $364 up to a high of $800. That's a over 100% gain right there. Uh, so very, very nice. And we could expect to see Ethereum now either make a double bottom against that price level or make a higher low. If you look at this, if you look at the stochastics, we do have very low stochastics, so it is primed uh, to have a bounce. But if I was going to dip by Ethereum, I would, I would really want to wait until we either one we see this make a double bottom at this level of, of support or two wait until it makes a higher low bounce and buy the first green candle to make new highs um, if you don't understand that strategy i recommend you do more studying because you are not very well prepared to trade uh, cryptocurrencies or trade in general so those are my general thoughts on the crypto market uh, let's just do a quick look at coin market cap and let's look at the uh, the market cap of of crypto. You can see the twenty four hour volume is only seventeen million dollars, which is really not that big at all. We've seen uh, these penny stocks that do a hundred million dollars of volume in the past day. So this is kind of uh, oh never mind, it's seventeen billion. Never mind, scratch out what I said. This is this is okay. <laughs> but if you look at the market cap chart. You can see this chart looks very lot like Bitcoin. And you can see that uh, the market cap is just losing lots of its exuberance, losing lots of its volume. And we just really need to see that volume come back into play. So we do have potential in Ethereum, in Litecoin, and in Bitcoin. But like I said, we're not going to retest those highs until we see that big exuberant uh, mentality towards Bitcoin. And I really have not been... Uh, like noticing anyone be as as uh, as influential and as as excited about crypto in general, not nearly as much as we saw back in in December and January when we had you know um, 
John McAfee and make that uh, you know large tweet of it hitting a million dollars by what was it 2020, um, and then just all these big big celebrities coming out to essentially just repump crypto and make it squeeze higher. Um, one thing that I like to say is that once the taxi driver is talking about it, it's probably time to sell. And that's kind of ex exactly what happened back in December and January. We were seeing everyone talking about Bitcoin, all the news channels, CNBC, Yahoo, Benzinga, Bloomberg, all the financial uh, people were talking about Bitcoin, making trading platforms for Bitcoin, and it was just the hottest thing. And that's why uh, in between November and January, it squeezed from 5,800 up to 19,000. That is an unhealthy move. And that's kind of the, um, the main reasoning that I have to say that Bitcoin was a bubble back in, uh, in January and December. So those are my general thoughts on crypto, guys. If you have any questions, concerns, or, or, or you want me to clear anything up, leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, like I said, if you guys want more crypto videos, just give me some ideas of what to uh, cover because like I said, the crypto market is pretty slow. It's pretty dead. Um, but I just want to get this content out to you guys because I know you guys enjoy it. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscription. And I'll see you guys in the next video.